Hey everyone, Tio here. Today I'm reviewing the Chewy HiPad X Pro, a 10.5 inch Android 12 tablet priced at US $149 and that's inclusive of shipping. First of all, a disclaimer, this is a review unit provided by Chewy, which is a company that is known for selling budget tablets, mini PCs and even laptops. Alright, let me just give you the bottom line up front. This is a good looking tablet with a vibrant display that is bright enough. It's thin, it's portable, it has thin bezels, pretty solid build quality, decent audio quality, although they sound slightly hollow. Overall performance is quite good given the limitation with the processor. And the main limitation with this tablet in terms of performance is gaming. So if you want to play graphics intensive games, uh, you probably won't be able to play them at the highest graphics settings. Battery life is good. I am able to get above eight and a half hours with medium to above average brightness. Two features I use but are not available on this tablet are there is no auto brightness functionality so you have to adjust brightness manually and there is no way for you to mute specific types of notifications within apps. I'll talk more about that later. Now the overall design of this tablet looks good but the button placement for the volume and the power buttons are actually on the lower right side instead of the top right side. So this side is near the USB-C port at the bottom. That's the landscape camera. So yeah, in terms of overall design and quality, I would say this tablet would get 4 out of 5 stars. In terms of value for money, it's easily 5 out of 5 stars considering the budget pricing. And now on to the full review. Let's take a look at the items included in the box. So the packaging box has no design at all. And this is how the company keeps the prices of their tablets, of their products so low. I have already unboxed everything. So this is the warranty card, product inspection report, the manual, a 10 watt charger with USB-A port. This is a USB-A to USB-C cable, a little card with their website. This is the SIM ejection tool. This tablet comes with a screen protector already applied on it and you have to remove the protective film on top of the screen protector first, which I have already done so. So this is how the glossy screen protector looks. There are actually some air bubbles beneath the screen protector. For this review, I'm going to just keep the screen protector on, but this can be removed if you want to. So the design of this tablet looks good. The bezels are thin and uniform on the four sides. The corners are rounded off. The corners for the LCD display are rounded off as well. The weight of this tablet is 500 grams. So this is considered lightweight for a 10.5 inch tablet. And this is quite thin. The build quality is very solid. The back is metal with this nice smooth matte textured surface. Only this edge here is plastic. There are two cameras. One is a 30 megapixel camera and the other is a 0.3 megapixel depth camera. And here on top are the volume buttons and the power button which is located on the top right hand side uh, when you're holding this tablet horizontally. If you hold this tablet vertically, they are at the bottom right side, which is quite unusual because most tablets have the volume and power buttons at the top right side when the tablet is vertical. There is one landscape camera there. On this side, we have two speakers and there are two more speakers here. The audio quality is actually pretty good but the audio can sound slightly hollow. So for the audio quality, I would say it's maybe 3.5 out of 5 stars. Anyway, the audio still sounds good enough for me. This is the USB-C uh, port here at the bottom. Transfer speed for this port is just USB 2. And this is the SIM and micro SD card tray. This tray can take either two nano SIMs or one nano SIM and one micro SD card. 
I almost missed out on the 3.5mm audio jack that's located right here almost at the extreme corner. The placement of this port is very uncommon. This display is 10.5 inches and the resolution is 1920 by 1200. The visuals look quite sharp and the pixelation is not that noticeable. That's the air bubble from the screen protector. Colors on this display look good out of the box. There is no mention on the maximum brightness of this tablet on the website. So right now I'm using the tablet at 75% and this looks bright enough for me. The main downside with the brightness is there is no auto brightness or adaptive brightness feature. So you will have to adjust the brightness manually. So let's take a look at some photos. The colors are vibrant. Actually, the colors look much better than I expected. Obviously, the colors and the brightness will not match other more expensive tablets, but for a tablet at US $149, this is really good. Refresh rate for this display is 60 Hz, so the animation for the apps minimizing or expanding, and when it comes to scrolling web pages or scrolling the icons, the animation is not going to be as smooth compared to displays with 120 hz refresh rate. The aspect ratio of this display is 16 by 10, so it's considered wide. And when it comes to watching YouTube videos, which are usually 16 by 9, you get a good size, and this is quite enjoyable. The aspect ratio of this tablet is 16 by 10, so it's considered wide and this is a good aspect ratio for watching videos, for playing games and this visual here is quite big. So it's quite enjoyable to watch videos on this tablet. The speakers, they sound good but slightly hollow but that's a very minor downside. If you hold the tablet vertically like this, the volume and power buttons are here, but I don't usually click on them accidentally, so it's not a big issue where these buttons are. This tablet comes installed with stock Android 12 without any bloatware, so that's nice. Stock Android 12 has limited features and the UI design is quite simple, so I have actually installed Nova Launcher on top of Android and the overall performance is still quite smooth. So with your own custom launcher, you will be able to get more features. For example, with Nova Launcher, I can double tap on an empty area here to lock the screen and when I power on, that's how fast the face unlock is. So with stock Android, you are basically getting a blank slate so you can install your custom launcher and customize your tablet however you want to. Let's talk about performance. Even though the Unisoc T616 chip in this tablet is not top of the line, the overall performance is still really smooth. And this tablet has 6 gigs of RAM, so I currently have many apps open. And when I scroll to the back to the earliest app that I have open, I can still see the thumbnails for those apps. These are the transfer speeds for the internal storage. The speeds are quite decent. And just for comparison purposes, the transfer speed with the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra that I have is 60 to 80% faster than this tablet. And these are the transfer speeds for the USB-C port. These are essentially USB 2 transfer speeds, so they are quite slow. To test the transfer speed for this external drive, I also had to format it to FAT32 because this tablet could not read EX fat. Gaming performance is limited by the chip. This is Genshin Impact at the lowest graphics settings and the animation is quite smooth. I don't see any drop frames. Oops, enemies. Let's run away first. So at the lowest graphics settings, I don't see any drop frames. If I increase the graphics settings to low, from lowest to low, there will be some drop frames after playing for a few seconds. So if I run around for a few seconds, I can see the animation stutter slightly and it will be smooth and then it will stutter slightly. 
So that's the limitation when it comes to gaming with um, this tablet. You will be able to play games, but not at the highest graphics settings. All right, to conclude, this is a fairly straightforward tablet for me to review. I did not experience any glitches. The design looks good, the build quality is solid, the display is bright enough and the colors look good out of the box. The colors look better than I expected. Overall performance is really smooth with the main limitation being gaming. So if you play graphics intensive game, you will not be able to play them at the highest video or graphics settings. And that's the limitation. Downsides. The button placements are quite weird and this 3.5mm audio jack on the bottom right side here, um, it's a weird placement. The audio quality is loud and clear and the surround quality is actually quite good. But the audio sounds slightly hollow but that's really a minor issue. In terms of value for money, I would say this is 5 out of 5 stars easily because it is a pretty good tablet for the price you pay. If you're interested to get this tablet, you can get it from AliExpress or from Chewy.com. The purchase links are in the video description below. Alright, I hope this review is useful. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye!